Netherlands against Belgium. And it's going to be Belgium who get us underway wearing the white shirt, attacking the goal to our left in the first half. Very close to a capacity crowd here at the De Kuyp Stadium. And we often say, Tommy, the first 10 minutes is going to be really vital, but in this game, uh, it could be really crucial, especially if Belgium can snatch an early lead. Well, there's no question about it. Belgium need to get into this game early. They need to take the crowd out of it, Mike. And, uh... Well, there's the Netherlands lineup, up uh, and there's three changes from the side that uh, beat San Marino 6-0 last time out. Coming back is Michael Reisiger from injury, Philip Koch, who's included, and Patrick Kluivert wears the number nine shirt as well. Um, he's been very uh, much absent during World Cup qualifiers because of injury. As for the Belgium side, two changes from the side that won 3-1 in Turkey. Uh, Philip Albert, the Newcastle United the defender, comes in wearing the number three shirt. And Vidovic is also included at the centre of the defence. And uh, Kirkerhoven losing out that time. And now Sidor. Now Koku. The Netherlands looking to switch play from one side to the other on there by Ronald De Boer who's Dennis Bergkamp who's been in sparkling form recently a hat-trick for Arsenal just 10 days ago in a Premier League game against Leicester City well that's one thing about the Netherlands when they're good they're brilliant when they're bad they're awful we've seen that so many times with them we saw it against Wales they looked like world beaters they came out against Turkey they didn't look like they could beat anybody and certainly they weren't capable of beating Turkey Michael Reisinger in his football Barcelona in Spain after his transfer from AC Milan Koku tries to shot and it takes a ricochet there Clivert was the player in pursuit well there was a lot of questions what kind of a reception would Clivert get coming back Mike a lot of allegations made against him he spent all of the season in Italy got a warm reception when he was announced 20 degrees Celsius, the forecast is for it to stay clear in the field. It's early part of the domestic season here in uh, the Netherlands. Very, very good indeed. She up stamp. Playmaker in midfield for this Dutch side. The referee today comes from Copenhagen in Denmark. That's Kim Milton Nielsen. Referee in since 1976, as well on the FIFA panel since 1988. Not referee, and he enjoys playing tennis. And that's tinkering with computers. Well, the Netherlands in the first corner of the game. A good overlapping run there from Michael Reisiger. Thank you, Corbin was the man who had to put the ball out for the corner. Who's uh, hitting the coach of the Netherlands side warned his players not to be complacent 3-0 victory in uh, Brussels now Vim Jong with the corner Belgium get it clear the one thing we noticed about this Belgium side in that victory over Turkey which surprised a lot of people is that they can really absorb a lot of pressure and then look uh, very very dangerous on the break led by that man Enzo Schifo Oh, Oliver is also man Mike, he scored a hat-trick against Turkey man who prizes living in Italy born in Brazil, could have been a Brazilian international but decided to head for Belgium instead Vignon, the outswinging corner, again Belgium getting clear it's Clarence Seedorf, he's been sparkling in early season form for Real Madrid he gets this one across and the glancing header from Kleiber and just wide well, Patrick Kluivert yet to score a goal in World Cup qualifying this campaign, but he was mightily close here, Tommy. Well, Cedar was the man who squares it across. Kluivert gets that dancing header on it. The keeper is absolutely stuck to the ground. There's no way he's going to get to it. Kluivert almost catches that back post. Every scored two against Ireland in that famous playoff at Anfield. Kluivert needs some goal scorer. He's now playing his trade at AC Milan after his transfer from Ajax Amsterdam. Well, it was Tiber that scored the goal to beat AC Milan in the Euro in the Champions League final when he was with Ajax. So, Koku, who himself has been in good early season form for PSV Eindhoven. 
a bit of a problem. He hasn't signed with them yet, Mike. There's rumors that he may in fact be leaving PSV. Free kick then to Belgium. So he's floated in, the glancing header, and the Saar off his line quickly. And Koku. And it's Burkamp just coming off his chest, and it allowed uh, Philip Albert to get in quickly. Well, a lot of people were already surprised that Albert got the call up today. Well, Belgium have been hit by injuries. In fact, uh, De Ruva, the central defender who plays here in Holland with NAC Bradery, is out with a hip injury, and uh, Rudy Schmitz has also uh, injured his elbow in training, which ruled him out. In fact, the goalkeeper today, uh, Deville, actually dislocated his finger in uh, training and was doubtful as Oliveira looks at the free kick well down by uh, Frank De Boer well Oliveira has a, a history of taking dives this time a little bit of a pull down by De Boer but Oliveira falls very very easily it's going to be a free kick for weekends who is a good job since he took over from this Belgian side. He actually took over after they were beaten 3 0 by the Netherlands in uh, Brussels. Oh, there's a lot of big traffic jam on the box. Even Kybert is back to defend against this one. Kybert's come back because Philip Albert has come forward. So this one part in to the penalty area, the header back. Came off the head there of Vim Young. No worries for Edwin van der Sar. Oh, that shows a lot of confidence in your keeper, doesn't it? You just knock it back to him like that. Van der Sar won three championships with Ajax. Edwin van der Sar has only conceded two goals in uh, six World Cup qualifiers. Now, Koku. Here's Dennis Bergkamp. Faced there by Albert. Still Bergkamp. All played in by Newman. The header this time too high. Uh, once again, Clyburn is the big target man inside. And he looks very sharp, Tommy. Yeah, he certainly does. I mean, his conditioning with AC Milan has helped him out a lot. You see, he gets right on the front of the defender here. The defender's all over him. Vinovic is the man who was trying to keep him down. The problem with Clyburn, Mike, is that he's so good in the air, but he's also brilliant with his feet. So perhaps for the first time in... Uh in the last couple of seasons, he's now 100% fit as well. There's Newman. Now rising, has some space ahead. Hard to settle at AC Milan, but now reunited with Rui van Gaal at Barcelona. That one down this near touchline is resulted in another corner for the Netherlands. Well, they're pushing Rising. You're up on the right-hand side, down the right flank all the time. Little Beach is the man who's taken the ball away a couple of times in the middle. Vim Young. Nice to aim at, but needed a bit more height. Now Seedorf. All played wide, and now whips across quickly. Thinking there from Vim Young because he tried to play that ball in early. Well, you want to put a price tag, Real Madrid have put a price tag on this man. They've said no less than 300 million US dollars. Are you kidding me or something? I think they want him to go. I think they want to make sure that they don't, nothing happens like the Ronaldo situation. I think that's what they're trying to guard against, Mike. Cedor scored the goal for Real Madrid last weekend in the 1-1 draw against Atletico Madrid in the in match of the Spanish league season. Wouldn't have done his value any harm. Now, Mapenza. And Yapstan showing a good turn of pace. And that's behind Hoven, central defender. Mapenza, who was another player, in fact, who was in doubt for today's game. Sustained a knee injury in training, but it's now fully recovered. Oh, this man has had a busy, busy time so far. Vidovic, I mean, he's trying to contain everything that comes down through the middle. Bergkamp is the man, he's sliding in underneath. Cedar tried to play it through to him. 
ESPN will continue on the road to World Cup 98 from Wembley Stadium. It's England against Moldova. You'll be able to see that live here on ESPN. Our viewers in the United States will also be able to see that live. Wherever you're going to watch it around the world, check your local listings four times. Well, it should be an easy win for England, but of course, there's no such a thing as an easy game in the World Cup qualifying. There's going to be no Alan Shearer and no Teddy Sheringham, no Paul Ince, no Stuart Pearce, no Tony Adams. So England have a few selection problems for Glenn Hoddle. Throw on the far side for Belgium. Frank De Boer. Rising up. his shirt pulled and then uh, unceremoniously tripped the referee no plays play on well surely he was fouled by twice the last time in particular I mean he got, just got nailed there's Newman wrong with the ball now Koku lift that one over the defence but uh, Bill the goalkeeper taking that one quite easily so many of these players involved in that great Anderleck side. Kassan won four championships with them. You're going to see what happens here. That's a free right there. There's another one right there. Now let's see what happens at the end of it. And there's surely one right there. So three times he got nailed. Well, it's Philip Albert was the player who came in with the last challenge. Enzo Stalins. Oh, it's amazing. Albert just can't seem to find a spot on that Newcastle team, but he gets to call in here, and uh, no one for his tough place. Seedorf here, a little bit of a push-off. Staling's coming on underneath him. Oh, rising up. Burkamp. It's Wimjong. Well, that seems to be the theory out there, Mike, that if you're going to beat the Netherlands, you've got to hit them and hit them off them. They don't seem to take the body very well. Oh, yep, Stam. And now Stam, seeing an opening, bursting through. Great turn of pace there from Yap Stam. And determination there has given him a corner. Well, the brilliant run. I mean, nobody picked him up, and he just kept going forward. Stam, who actually scored seven goals last season for PSV Eindhoven in their championship uh, win in the Dutch League. Well, he's known more as a marker than a player that makes kind of runs like that, Mike. He scored a goal last weekend as well in the Dutch League. As we get this header, it's cleared off the line there by Mapenza. Still the danger's not cleared. And the referee has found an infringement. In fact, it was Oliveira who was on the line coming to the rescue. Oh, and what a rescue it was. A powerful header coming in. Look at that. Oliveira just snaps it away as cool as ever you'd want to see. That one was heading for the net. The keeper was out of the play, Mike, and Oliveira saved the day. And it was Yap Stam who rose for the header. And the closest we've come to a goal. Over 13 minutes played in this first half. Still no score. Now Mapenza trying to link up there with Oliveira. Burkamp moving it for Seedorf. Newman. His PSV teammate there, Bim Young. Newman again. Playing as a left back, Mike. I don't think he's too happy there, but he's playing very well for them. Seedorf taking the throw. Seedorf again, he's just playing that one back. Goku. Now Newman. It's Arthur Newman, in fact, started his career as a striker. In the 1993 94 season, he was the leading goal scorer for PSV. And then got converted into a left back. I'm sure he's won all his international honours. Vidovic again uh, penalised, this time for holding uh, Bergkamp. Well, he's been the busiest man out there of the, the Belgian defenders. It's Bergkamp who's been 
in such great form for us all this season. I suppose the big surprise is that Mark Overmars has also been in sparkling form for the Gunners. He's not called up for this game for all the Netherlands. Well, I'd say it came as a surprise to him as well, Mike. You'd imagine there would have been a spot from somewhere on the panel. And here come Belgium. Oliveira there just to get on the end of it. He was it's under pressure by Michael Reisinger. Now Seedorf. Seedorf there being held by Enzo Schifo. So uh, making his 79th appearance today. It's a record for international appearances for Belgium. Oh, I think the point you made very well taken, Mike. Belgium do absorb an awful lot of pressure, but they have that very quick counter-attack with Schifo and Oliveira. Oku caught uh, after he released the ball. And we've got the first yellow card, and Crasson is the player who goes in the referee's notebook. Oh, Mr. Crasson coming across, the man who plays with Napoli nowadays, just takes him out of it from the back. He's lucky that's not a red card. Netherlands wanted to take the free kick uh, quickly, but three wasn't ready. Newman, Bergkamp. Bergkamp caught there. And this time, uh, Vyovic again. Oh, Vyovic is so tough at the back. Very uncompromising. He's come with the feet all the time. As soon as Bergkamp turns, he catches him right on the shin. The referee has come up with another card. I think this is for... Uh, it, uh, in fact, was uh, Van der Elst. And that was for something that Frankie Van der Elst said to the referee. So two yellow cards in the space of a minute. This free kick for the Netherlands. Push through. Koku. Lovely skills there from Philip Koku and a good cross as well. Belgium under pressure. And Burkamp trying to come in at the far post. There's no place out there, Tommy, for the faint hearted. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The Belgian defenders have drawn a line and said, Thou shalt not pass. And if you do pass, you're going, to get your own risk. you're going to get clipped there's no question about it I mean you can see the intent every ball that's dropping down talk about a 50-50 ball it's definitely 64 in Belgium's favour the way they're going for it we kick down all the way through for Van der Sar. you're watching the road to World Cup 98 here on ESPN from European Group 7 the Decap Stadium in Rotterdam is the venue it's the Netherlands against Belgium and just over 18 minutes played in the first half. We're still awaiting the first goal. Along with Tommy Smith, I'm Mike Hill. Netherlands in possession. Frank De Boer. Rising up. Belgium coming into this game without uh, Luke Nielis. Top goal scorer in uh, the Dutch league last season for PSV Eindhoven. Out because of injury. For the game where they definitely need goals now. Cross from Newman. Philip Deville there taking that one uh, quite comfortably despite some attention. I'm surprised they don't have the, the ability on the, the PSV good scorer, Mike. He scored what? Nine goals in ten games for PSV and uh, he's on the bench here. I'm sure we're going to see him at some point. And it's the builder who has become a real scoring sensation since he arrived at PSV from Anderlecht. He's seed off. Still uh, keeping possession, Clarence seed off. In his debut for Ajax when he was only 16 years old. And he seems to have been around for so long, seed off. He's still only 21. He'll be good when he grows up, won't he, Tommy? Here's Bergkamp. Now the shot coming in, and the flag was up in any case. The referee has allowed play to continue. It was Ronald De Boer who got the shot in on target. Oh, you just look at that side out there, Mike. And the way they're playing, I mean, it's pressure, pressure, pressure. The same against Turkey, they didn't score. Does it become a psychological thing after a while? Do you get the impression maybe you cannot score? 
They didn't score against Turkey, but they did score six the last time out, and they beat San Marino. And this man, Burkham, scored two on that occasion. Uh, Koku. Well, unfortunately, everybody scores six against San Marino, don't they? It's rising up. Two rising up. This time coming inside. You can see there, there are seven defenders back for Belgium. A wall of white. Well, that's Shibo. obvious. That's obviously what they're going to do. They're trying to put up, try to break somebody out of there after they've plant everybody at the back. Burkamp gets past two and then uh, gets held back. Must be a card. And it's Philip Albert. Well, Albert there was beaten all ends up by Dennis Bergkamp. Got uh, away from him and uh, crashed on. Well, as soon as he went by him, then uh, Albert just gets a grip of his jersey. So it's three yellow cards for Belgium. Free kick then to the Netherlands. Again, Belgium get it clear. Albert's a mighty lucky Mike. We thought he should have gotten the card earlier in the game. If he had, he would have been gone. This is the 119th meeting between these two sides at international level up until 1966. In fact, he used to play every year, home and away. Now, the previous under 18, Holland have won 54, Belgium have won 39, 25 have finished in draws. Off. Now, Koku wins the ball. Referee says illegally. He's hitting, uh, doesn't agree with that decision. Uh, crash on read the play beautifully to come away with the ball, and then he was stripped of it, but the referee ruled that it was an illegal strip. Now, Oliveira, this is where he's so dangerous, inside the penalty area. And stopped there by Yap Stam, and great pace again from Stam. Oh, the one thing about Stamp, Mike, is he's such a hard man at the back. I mean, if you have a hard man that has the kind of pace that he has, he can cause all kinds of problems. He just took the ball away from Oliveira at that time. Newman plays it square. Rising up. He's out of play, so uh, it's going to be a throw. UEFA Champions League highlights, a preview of the 1997-98 season. Of course, here on ESPN, we'll be following the Champions League right the way through. But we'll be previewing the upcoming group matches. Check your local listings four times. That's for our international audience. The UEFA Champions League is back. Now, free kick for the Netherlands. And the flashing header, and that wasn't too far wide. And Philip Koku was the player who got on the end of that free kick. Well, he has made out a habit of scoring goals. Look at this, he's just going to break through. He's the first man that comes in. He gets in there in front of the board, takes the header, flashes it over the top. Still no score. Clearance that time, it fell nicely for Ronald de Boer. Oh, we're playing that one across the field, but uh, rising of that had to turn. Now Bergkamp, only being closely marked. Yonk, now rising up. Rising of there, getting past one, and you see the good covering from Belgium, that's Enzo Schifo. Uh, one man stood him up and Schiefer just came at the right time and took the ball away from him. A player with the clearance. But if you're going to keep Schiefer occupied in his own penalty area, Mike, he's not going to be much of a danger at the opposite end of the field is where you really need him. Newman. Koku. Vignon. Some Belgian defence just retreating. Here's Bergkamp. 
unable that time to get away from uh, Vidovic. Well, there's been a complaint a lot of people have. Vidovic is really playing very strong in the middle. Very difficult to get around him. Well, this weekend, a very busy weekend of World Cup qualifying in uh, Europe. And we can bring you some of the results now in Group 8. Romania have beaten Liechtenstein 8-1. Romania, of course, the first team from Europe to actually qualify for the World Cup Finals. And Ireland uh, scoring four goals and beating Iceland. That keeps their hopes alive in Group 8. In Group 9, Armenia, they're beating Albania 3-0. And that could have uh, some repercussions in the end because it means that uh, they have now jumped across over Northern Ireland. And remember in the World Cup runners-up positions, now judged on the games against the top three as Dennis Bergkamp nearly opened the score in here. Oh, he walks in on the far side of the box. De Boer is the man who's going to play that long ball. So many of Holland's attacks start with the Boer. Look at that perfect placement. Bergkamp has to stretch a little bit for it, and he just misses the post. Beautiful ball from the Boer. Dropped it right in front of Bergkamp. Bergkamp let it beat him just a little bit too much, and it's just wide right of that back post. And it's Bergkamp. Six goals in this World Cup qualifying campaign so far, so close there to number seven. But for the first time, the Netherlands were able to get behind the Belgian defence. Now rising up. So that's what I was saying. The best runners up will be determined by the results of the second place teams against the teams in each group that finish first, third and fourth. With all uh, Bania winning today, that means they've overcome Northern Ireland into that coveted fourth spot, which would suit Germany because Germany actually dropped a point against Northern Ireland. And Germany is to finish runners up. We'll give them a better runners up record. Perhaps if Northern Ireland had finished fourth, but there's still a long way to go in qualifying. Bear got in there quickly. 170 teams looking for those coveted spots, Mike. This year, of course, this World Cup, the, the field has expanded. It's 32 teams for the first time in the World Cup final series. Already we know eight teams that are short of a spot in France. Five nations now from Africa are known. Asian World Cup qualifying got underway this weekend and South Korea started with a 3-0 victory. In their group, Group B. York is penalised. Oh, just a gentle push at the back there. Now, Classon on the far side for Belgium. Being stood up there by uh, Koku. It's one of the things that Croissant loves to do when he plays in Italy with Napoli. He loves to push up on that right wing. He's just going to slip the ball around and when he does, Kaku just gets a grip of him. Then he's a referee, would give you a yellow card for something like that. Flick header, Oliveira. He's there by Frank De Boer, still Oliveira. And Van der Sar grabbed it in the second attempt. Oliveira still able to get a shot off, Tommy, despite the uh, acute angle. Well, he's very, very strong, very, very skillful. I mean, he is the lead goal scorer. That time he really could have caught the keeper by surprise. Not too many players will get a good shot from there, but he did. Watch what happens here. The goal is all around him. He's going to bring it back towards the byline, onto the left foot, and all of a sudden, he really hooked that on the cross. He was off balance as well. Luis Oliveira. Wingo was last season for Fiorentina in Serie A. Now Seedorf. Going through that time from midfield by the ball. And Meyer was the player who came across to stop that attack. Very tight on this near touch line. Well, the board, the twins scored against Wales, probably the one of the very few international duos who have ever done that as two brothers. De Boer has got four goals in World Cup qualifying and Ronald De Boer has got two so far. The 
Hawks hitting for the senior side really dominate this first uh, the half hour mark of this first half but nothing to show for it on the scoreboard a few black and blue marks as well from that very tough defense that Belgium has thrown across the field well the band's a good sound anyhow Mike it's always the uh, this is whenever Holland uh, play in an international game now Koku turn that time here's Ronald De Boer showed too much of that still managed to get it across nobody could get on the end of it oh, Ronald De Boer just pushing it into the box and Van Meer coming across taking it away looked like a very dangerous situation look at that he just floats into the box watch him as he goes down he gets a touch on the ball brings it back into the middle and it's actually hooked away by Philippe Albert side then for the Netherlands and the Koku's a player to take it just it out of play it's going to be a corner now for the Netherlands that's five now the five corners the Netherlands have had the Bill who plays now for Sport in Lisbon in Portugal goalkeeper for Belgium on this corner from Vim Yonk. The header and the goal. And Yap Stam gets his first international goal and gives the Netherlands the lead in this crucial World Cup qualifier. Well, he got a powerful header on it earlier. Oliveira had to take it off the line. This time he's not picked up. Watch him as he comes up. You see him right in the middle. Nobody picks him up. He gets the header. He gets there first. He scored seven for PSV last year in the league. What an important goal this is for Holland. Look at that. He just gets there before Van Meyer and he knocks it home. Goal came in the 32nd minute. Yep, Stan, the goal scorer. The Netherlands won. Belgium nil. Well, now that they've unlocked the defense, Mike, can the Netherlands keep going? Very unlikely source. Look at Stam, he's standing all alone. Nobody paid any attention to him, and by the time Van Meyer decided to play him, the ball was already in the net. Well, that's the player coming through that time, so we're now going to have a corner at the other end. That's the first one for Belgium. And the ball, the captain of this Dutch side. Nice as defenders. And Van der Sar. That's for this corner. Schifo with the outswinger. The header down. And Van der Sar takes that one comfortably. It was Van Meyer there with the header. This is the Road to World Cup here on ESPN from European Group 7. We're coming to you from the Dekaip uh, Stadium. The MasterCard game summary. Yap Stam has broken the deadlock here with a goal in the 32nd minute. It's the Netherlands 1, Belgium 0. Along with Tommy Smith, I'm Mike Hill. And here come the Netherlands again. From Jok there with a the flick on. Michael Rising are not uh, chasing through. And you just felt, Tommy, with uh, these the corners that the Netherlands were getting, that something would come from them because they were all causing problems. Yeah, and it was, I mean, the, the pressure was constant, Mike, almost for 30 minutes. I mean, Belgium showing very few trips up the field trying to get an attack going, and they were just pinned back in their own half all the time, and uh, it eventually paid off. But from an unlikely source, although he did get a few good headers earlier, I mean, that good save by Oliveira. Burkham trying to go through there, a little bit of slack play that time by the Belgian defence that tied it up there ben, by uh, Van Meyer. Well, Belgium have never won on Dutch soil in a World Cup qualifier. If they are to win today, they're going to create history. And not alone that, you go a goal down, Mike, and the Netherlands really, a draw will suit them fine with the goal differential they have on top of the table. Who's hitting? Who took over? And that was the reaction when the ball went in the back of the net. And I would think a lot of that looked on me as just pure relief. Pure relief that they finally scored. Took him off the hot seat for a while. Took over in 1995. 
began for Gart. Interesting in career, Goose uh, hitting. The player, he played with the draft shafts, PSV, NEC. Also played in the United States with the Washington Diplomats and the San Jose Earthquakes. Became a staff coach at the Dutch FA. After four years, but uh, the Grasha is a coach there. And a rising up. The ball playing as the sweeper and central defender for this Dutch side, but not the role he now plays at Ajax, where he's been converted to a left back. And the new coach there, Morton Olsen. Well, the one thing about the board coming out of the back, Mike, he has that ability to kick you over the 35 40 yard pass. Now, Burkham, and so close there to yet another goal for the Netherlands. And Dennis Burkham again, well, that, missing that post. Belgium is starting to wilt a little bit. Nice ball back from Clyburn. Burkham has a lot of net to shoot at. He should have put that one away. He would like to have it back again. He had a lot of time on the ball, Mike. He had a lot of net to shoot at, and he just whistled it wide of the post. Nice ball from Patrick Clyburn. It's unselfish uh, play that time by uh, Patrick Clyburn. Dennis Burkham, in fact, is fourth on the all-time goal scorers for the Dutch national side. 32 goals coming into today's game. And he's one behind Abe Lenstra and Johan Cruyff. And just a three behind uh, Raz uh, Wilkes, who's the leading goal scorer in uh, international football for the Netherlands. Now Schifo. And this one in away that time by a combination of Yap Stam and uh, De Boer. Oh, Oliveira pushed to the back. Surely it must be a free out for the Netherlands. We're going to see the ball a little bit confusion in here and watch Oliveira coming in on the back and uh, he just takes Newman out of it. Free kick for the Netherlands. Williams are taking it short. Frank the ball. Takes the ball back and gets it back from the upstand. Oh, as one country, you don't want to have to come back from one down, Mike. They hold on to the ball so very well. They play that total possession football game Stan there playing all the way back to Van der Sar Alex Ferguson was interested in signing Yap Stan for Manchester United other people question his wisdom Pelfrey's very good season for PSV last year and uh, form he's been in this season let's see why Ferguson was interested uh, Koku Albert with the clearance Shifo now Philippe Albert. Bignon. Bignon is such an important player for the Dutch in midfield. Often doesn't get noticed, but just gets his foot in, takes up good positions, little touch here and there. Now Seedorf. Is that one uh, through? It's going to be a goal kick. The UEFA Champions League returns to ESPN, our first live game on match day one, Newcastle United against Barcelona. Join John Paul de la Camera and Tommy Smith from St James's Park in Newcastle, and Newcastle United take on Barcelona. It'll also be seen by viewers in the United States on ESPN. If your local listeners uh, for the times of that game, our opening game from the UEFA Champions League for a brand new season as van der Sar has to come up with the save to deny Mapenza. oh brilliant effort here by Mapenza. watch the ball comes back to him and he just takes it out of the air takes it on his chest hits it with the left foot keepers in a good position to take it but that was a good effort by Mapenza, mike and it's just 19 years old he scored a couple of goals in world cup qualifying now playing at uh, standard liege 
was an awkward eye height and he still was able to get it on target. I'm sure he would have much rather had it been on the other foot had he been hit, hit the hitter with his right foot. But just the way he took it down and the way he was, the step just dictated he had a hitter with the left. Now point the ball. Burkamp. Down nicely, Burkamp floating that one in and just a bit too close to the goalkeeper in the end. Oh, he caught Vidovic too as he went for the ball. Shifo. It's on. Touch defence there, standing firm. Oliveira felt that he was being uh, held. Might have had a case. And Kirkhoven. And Shifo. Under pressure there from Seedorf. Still Enzo Shifo. And that's his career. Enzo Shifo has had his problems throughout his career. It has been his injury problem. Seen and missed some key matches for club and country. Out there. And that one forward, but the offside flag is up. Well, there's you can see that's what happened there. Uh, the last time the ball went up the field. I'm surprised the referee hasn't put him off the field. Mike Uffley gets that attended to. Bert Camp was the man who caught him with the elbow on the nose. Jack Stam, whose goal uh, separates these two sides. Stab. Fiber has been very closely marked. That's what we expect. And he is under pressure again, but uh, just getting his head to the ball that time, and it fell nicely for Shifo. Now press on. there by Stamp. Just a bounce now to play there. Lickens uh, giving some instructions from the sideline. Coming up at half-time, don't miss ESPN's half-time report presented by MasterCard. We'll have a look at the Belgium-Netherlands rivalry. We'll also have a look back at the first half highlights of this game. A throw now to Belgium. Just over two minutes to go to half-time. Shifo played square and Meyer I think the ball got there first now the shot it's a little worry Edwin van der Sar and then Passon who has scored one goal in the World Cup qualifying the shooting like that Oh, a little ambitious there, he thought he might be for that. Just pulling it in the air, he came up underneath the ball, Mike. It just was a complete waste of a shot. For the Laponda Lopenza, just 19 years old, what a great talent he is. Well, he was playing in the second division last year and the team got promoted. And once he got onto that big stage, Standard Liège decided to sign him. Certainly it's a carnival type atmosphere here now at the Dekaip Stadium. As Burkamp gets bundled down from behind. Now Koku. So Koku trying to turn but dispossessed there by Frankie van der Els. Actually retired from international football but was coaxed to come out by uh, Judges Lee Kens. And today van der Els in his 74th match not having the happiest of days out there so far he hasn't had too many touches on the ball a long career for Van der Els his debut back in 1984 in a 0 draw against Greece Clyburn now 
Seedorf. Seedorf floated that one in, just curling it away from the goalkeeper. Nobody coming in the far side though for the Netherlands. Oh, Seedorf, he's had a few problems in the past, Mike. A few disciplinary problems and uh, a few problems for our Euro 96. Six, you van der Elst, free kick in for Belgium. The plane stoppage time. The end of the first half. And there in fact is the half-time whistle. Referee today, Kim Milton Nilsson bringing the first half to a close as we check the Master of Africa. So they're already there. And both these sides still striving to get there at the moment one would have to say that the Netherlands are in a good position leading here by a goal to nil the Netherlands in the orange shirts now attacking the goal to our left the one thing I want to know is how do you figure out who the second best team in Europe is that's what I want to know how they're going to come up with that equation well, I've said before I can't understand there were 49 European uh, nations still can't understand why they couldn't have come up with seven groups of seven and the top two from each group goes through there's your 14 it would have been a lot easier as it is i'm sure we're going to come up with some exciting playoffs though well that's the only one good thing it may add a couple of games to us croissant is gone yes croissant is gone and uh, Jeannot is the player who has come on it's just you know who for Udinese in uh, Serie A in Italy 24 last Sunday he comes on just his 15th international appearance did a couple of games with Coventry after he went there from Standard Liège but then immediately went to Udinese not known for goal scoring Mike so they're obviously putting him in to do a little bit of tough defending he's never scored a goal at international level as the Dutch go forward in the game we have stand he really is a bit of a secret weapon for them, isn't he? He was last season for PSV in the uh, in the championship, and uh, this is why, Tommy, I mean, this was his goal. Look at him, I mean, he was standing there all alone, Mike. Nobody picked him up for a long time. Look at that. There's not a white shirt. What's the white shirt coming across? Much too late. By the time he makes any contact, the Amsterdam has already put the ball in the net. That's the goal that separates these two sides. Oliveira. Nice ball. This is Shifo. Oh, it needed a much better cross from Enzo Shifo. I think Ned Tommy was caught in two minds whether to play the cross or have a shot. In the end, it was neither. Oh, that was a terrible mistake by Shifo. He had a great opportunity, nicely set in on the right side of the box. Oliveira had made a good play to get him free, and uh, he just uh, lasted it over the top. Look at the opportunity here. Here's the the ball dropped into the box Shifo has all kinds of time but his first touch lets him down very badly and he had two players in on the six yard line so it was the player who played it through there for Shifo so he is still on as we said he had a knee injury coming into this game it was doubtful whether he would play all people felt that uh, the builder would get the uh, the call but that's not been the case oh, for Belgium oh, just getting his foot in Weekends, the coach of Belgium who hasn't chased the defeat with the national side since he took over. Frank de Boer is uh, penalised. Oh, he can't believe it. We're going to see here, Oliver is the man backing in on him. De Boer gets a little bit of a grip of the arm. Well, I think it's six of one and a half dozen of the other, but the referee saw it differently. So this free kick, two Belgium is in a dangerous position. Bears gone forward and so has Van Meyer. It wasn't played in uh, high enough in fact. The Dutch defence are able to get the ball out of play. Well, 
you got to feel that if Albert could get a touch inside, Mike, when he played 17 games last year for Newcastle and scored six goals, I mean, that's a tremendous strike rate for a striker, but when you consider that Albert's a defender, it takes it an amazing strike rate. So we've seen some of the goals he scored. I remember the one last year where he chipped Peter Schmeichel, which uh, was one of the candidates for goal of the season in the English Premier League. Well, it goes to show you how good Newcastle are if you can't get his place on the team. Belgian player of the year in 92. Yeah, Van Meyer moving this one across. Oh, that was a push in the back inside. Seedorf got away with one. Rising there with a the clearance. Vidovic. Who else there combining? Here's Van Meyer. This is a better start from Belgium. This is Genoa. Van Meyer. Albert oh, plays it forward. Another ones are starting to do what Belgium did in the first half, just root everything out of it. I think that comes down towards their own end of the field. You nail them. Ronald De Boer, Burkamp, now Vim Young. Course, those two had such a great understanding during their days at Ajax. They both went together to Inter Milan, neither really settled in Italy. Both have discovered their form though since. Uh, Returning from Italy, Vimyon with PSV, Bergkamp with Arsenal. Now Seedorf. Just a bit too high that time for Dennis Bergkamp. Now Schifo. Bergkamp, of course, that famous man that's afraid to fly, Mike. Something that happened on a flight from uh, the East Coast in the United States when he was here in the 94 World Cup. And uh, he got such a fright that he, he just almost refuses now to fly. So that's why he's missed a couple of games for... The Netherlands. Yes, didn't play in the game in uh, Turkey. Actually uh, played and scored twice in the game against San Marino, but he actually drove down for that game. Uh, throw on the far side for the Netherlands. And seed off. Now Bergkamp. Flip that one uh, away there from uh, Vidovic. I'm trying to remember that flight. It might have been maybe from Florida to the West Coast. Did they go to play Brazil in the West Coast? I know they played Brazil and uh, they had to travel from their original camp, which was based down in Florida. I believe that's the flight where he got such a shock on uh, the plane went through a very bad storm and it just really got his nerves going. Now the ball played across and it was Arthur Newman to the rescue. But Belgium that time got behind the Dutch defence and it was Oliveira who was very close to get on the end of it. Now Mapenza. Kept in play by Schifo. Genoa. Seed off. Well, it's almost a story of two halves. I mean, a complete difference, Mike. I mean... Belgium are coming out now in the second half and doing what the Netherlands did in the first half. Constant pressure. Well, as we said earlier, it's a big day in World Cup qualifying all around the, the world today. And in uh, Group 8, Lithuania have beaten Macedonia 2-0. Now, with Ireland winning earlier, that was a good result. And Norway have beaten Azerbaijan. It means now that Norway are assured of a spot in France. Latvia have overcome Estonia by a goal to nil from a European Group 4. So two big results there. Certainly Macedonia losing. And here's Kleiber. And we've got another goal here. And now Holland surely are on their way to a victory. Wow, this one came against the run of play. The ball involved again and Clivert is the man who's going to whistle in. We talked about his great goal scoring rate for the Netherlands. Young man just keeps it going. You're going to see the ball played right through the middle. Clivert takes it on. Little return pass, he keeps running, good running off the ball, and he just hits this one a ton, and there's the bulging old onion bag as he puts it away. Beautiful ball right into the middle, but watch the reaction of Kleiber. A little touch back to him, played nicely back to him by Bert Camp, and Kleiber keeps on the run and offers it home. 
great goal by Patrick Kleiber. His sixth international goal, it came in the 53rd minute, his first goal in World Cup qualifying. The Netherlands 2, Belgium 0. And Patrick Kleiber taking that goal expertly. Well set up for him by uh, Dennis Bergkamp. Arthur Newman there playing that one back. Patrick Kleiber. Said before the game that if the crowd get on his back as the Dutch media seemed to do before he left uh, Ajax with uh, some wild reporters in the newspaper uh, a lot of his personal affairs but he wouldn't be playing again but he got a great reception here and he's repaid the crowd with a goal for the Netherlands just getting back to that group eight, Mike, that we were talking about, that Lithuania victory means that Lithuania have now got themselves into second place. They've gone over Macedonia, so it's all to play for when Ireland play Lithuania on Wednesday. That's a very, very important game now. The Republic of Ireland level with Lithuania in second spot. Macedonia have now dropped down into the third spot. Why Keane scoring two goals for the Republic of Ireland? Not too often that happens, Mike. Perhaps the captaincy has done him good. Not only captain of Ireland, uh, but also captain now of Manchester United. Here's Clyburn trying to play it back there for Dennis Bergkamp. Now Belgium. It's such a bright start to this second half, but that goal came a bit uh, against the run of play, Tommy. Yeah, it certainly did. There was a lot of pressure by Belgium as they came out for the second half. The ball broke down through the middle. What's the nice run by Tiber? A nice one-two with Bergkamp. He gets in around the defender, and he just nails it. Philippe Albert, no way he can keep with Tiber. Tiber switched into another gear. Who's hitting? Loves what he sees. Now sees his team leading by two goals to nil. English Premier League, Monday, September the 22nd. We're off to Anfield. It's Liverpool against Aston Villa. Check your local listings for times. Viewers in the United States will be able to see that game on ESPN2. International viewers will see it live. Check your local listings, though, for times. Well, that promises to be a really good one, Mike. Aston Villa off to a kind of a slow start for Aston Villa. Yes, and, uh, Liverpool still active in the transfer market. Paganin there, uh, maybe the signing from Inter Milan. Should be available for that game. And of course, uh, Stan Collymore going back to uh, the side after his move to Aston Villa. I think that picture fooled us a lot from this game, Mike. Belgium really up against it now, down 2-0. Driver there, getting away from Schifo. Oh, the crowd keep chanting his name. Koku. Burkamp. Oh, we saw some fabulous displays from the Dutch side earlier in qualifying the demolition of Wales. And Dennis Burkamp doing well to keep that in and then getting the ball across. The field though taking it neatly. The goalkeeper released it quickly. Well, that's one thing about the Netherlands. When they start to play, Mike, we said at the beginning, when they're good, they really look like a world-class team. at the moment they've got uh, so much talent and they've got it in depth when you look at their bench for today one of those players I'm sure if there was any other nationality would be a first choice uh, international starter and players uh, such as Mark Overmars at the moment can't even get a spot in the squad well I think Mr Zenden has taken care of Mark Overmars That's, uh, he's kind of taken his spot up very small player from PSV, but he has the great ability to go forward. He's good, good, uh, great pace. And the ball played across, and nobody there for the Dutch that time. Great determination there from Philip Koku to get the ball across. Well, a lot of these players we will get a chance to see in the Champions League. There's the build-up. 
Patriots v Stryker now warming up on the sideline for Belgium the people felt that uh, he should be playing he's had his trouble of course with the Belgium FA he banned him last year for an incident in a league match in Belgium hence his uh, leave of Anderlecht to join PSV Eindhoven he scored eight goals in nine games for them nine goals now in ten games if you have a goal scorer like that Mike I think you have to seriously look at putting him on the international side Kevin uh, on your record is saying that perhaps his sign and his inclusion in the team in those vital goals in the last few weeks of the season he brought the championship to Eindhoven now Kleiber rising up and this one in Bergkamp taken on the chest there by Koku but uh, cleared in the end and then that's uh, Vilovic showing up in the air well, Belgium have just lost their way a little bit after that second goal now Mike because they came out so determined and they looked uh, so good in the first uh, seven or eight minutes of this second half but that uh, goal from Patrick Kluivert really does seem to have knocked the stuffing out of them yeah there's no question about it I mean there's much more relaxed side than I don't dare having a chat on the bench that's them that's sitting beside him yes uh, Van Huydong has scored four goals in World Cup qualifying he can never get into the starting lineup the man who went from Celtic to Nottingham Forest you got a feel he get a late call here second half it's really given the, the Dutch now a bit of a cushion in this game Koku with some good running off the ball picked out there by his PSV teammate Martha Newman now Koku with the cross and Belgium there in a bit of trouble hooked away eventually by Philippe Albert oh they see Milan will be hoping that Clifford plays like this for them they'd love to turn what happened last season around you're watching the Road to World Cup 98 here on ESPN from the De Kuyp Stadium in Rotterdam. The Mastercard game summary shows goals from Yap Stam in the first half. Patrick Kleibert in the second half. And it's the Netherlands leading here by two goals to nil. So close there to making it three. Almost Dennis, Dennis Bergkamp. Thought he was going to get the touch of the ball before the keeper, but the keeper came out right between himself and Kleibert and took it away. Wim Jank gets a card. Yellow card for Vim Yonk. It's the fourth yellow card of this game. The other three going to players from uh, Belgium. Kim Wilton Nilsson, the referee, not standing on uh, any nonsense in this game. Well, I think he had a set of tone, Mike, because this had the, the appearance of a game that would be very, very tough. Oh, Belgium. And, uh, players forward that time Oliveira seemed to take an eternity to bring that ball under control and decide what he was going to do with it with the time he had his mind made up the ball was already gone now here's Bergkamp Clivert showed too much of that to the defender Schifo playing up against uh, Mapenza Kunda Mapenza just uh, 19 years old, the future of Belgian football. And the choice shot there of Enzo Schieffer at 31. Trent, it's, uh, the end of an era. And some very good Belgium signs. Actually beat uh, the Dutch in the World Cup in the United States in 1994 when they were both drawn in the same group. And by a goal to nil. Belgium at the centre of one of those very controversial calls with a referee in the World Cup 94. Yes, that was in uh, Chicago against Germany where they had a clear-cut penalty uh, turned down. The referee got sent home, didn't he? Yes, Rosslesberger, the referee at the centre of that uh, fixing storm in Europe who has now been banned from refereeing anywhere in the world. Didn't do Belgium much good, of course, but... Uh, they went out at the same stage as the 
Dutch who were beaten in a very good game by Brazil, 3-2. It's funny how these two teams always seem to come up against each other in World Cup qualifying. Even more funny is that that's from almost four years ago, Mike. Time has really slipped by. We're looking forward to another one now. Played back that time. Van der Sar could not use his hands. So they came up against each other in the World Cup in 94, 98, 82, 86. And of course, uh, this World Cup, 1998. As well as meeting in the finals in 1994. Kirk Hoven. Another pressure there by Seedorf. Van der Elst. This is the final World Cup campaign for Frankie van der Elst. Van der Elst, who's had such an illustrious career, now playing for uh, Club Bruges. And this Belgium side really now look as if a, a team very disheartened. Just looking around, a lot of the heads have uh, dropped now, Tommy. The spring in the step is not there. They, they don't look hungry for the ball now. No, they don't. And they could be in trouble yet, Mike. They might, may not finish as the second best team in this particular group. Turkey has an opportunity. Turkey's on 10 points, but they have two games. So realistically, if they win both games... Yes, and one of those games for Turkey is against San Marino. You would have to say, in all honesty, that you would expect them to win that and win it quite well. And then it all comes down to the final game against uh, the Netherlands. Now, if the Netherlands win this... Now, there's a trip, and is that going to be a penalty? Yes. Jank is the man who commits the foul inside of the box. Well, I think he was going to say something to the referee and Van der Sar stopped him from talking, realising that Young had already been booked once. Well, you're going to see Oliveira is the man inside of the box and he just gets a grip of the shirt and he goes down well. We spoke earlier about he has that great ability to fall or dive, but in this case he went down well. The referee said it was a penalty call. So there's penalty for Belgium. Now this could change everything. Lorenzo Stalins is the player who's placing the ball. Three goals already in World Cup qualifying. Faced there by Van der Sar. Gives the keeper no chance. We've got a game on our hands yet again. Ah, uh, Belgium are definitely back in this one. He just rockets this one in. Van der Sar goes to his right. Stellings goes to the left, up high into the car of the net. Really well struck penalty kick. A lot of pressure on that kick, Mike, and it puts Belgium back in the game. Well, if Belgium needed some inspiration, now they've got it. They've got a goal back. It's only 2-1. Now Shifo trying to play that one through. Cut out there by Stan. It's Vignon. Well, I'm sure by Schieffer's own standards, Mike, it hasn't been a great day for me. He just hasn't been able to get involved with the attack. He's got a lot of good work at the back. He's done a lot of good defending. Koku. Seedorf. They say teams are always uh, susceptible after they've just scored a goal. Here come the Dutch now. Just trying to catch out the... Belgium defence before they can re really reorganise. Jonk plays this one in, and the ball headed down, and that's gone away for a corner. Oh, miscommunication there. And you can see the uh, hips uh, moving there from Genoa, saying to his teammates he didn't get a call. Look at this, he's, all he has to do is just let the ball keep bouncing by him, and it's gone over the byline, it would have been a goal kick, but instead it's a corner. This is Genoa. For Yap Stam. I'm sure Belgium will pick him up this time. Well, he's forward. As Jonk takes this one to the far post. Not the most convincing of headers. Here comes back in this time from a different angle, and the header! And that's only just wide from Patrick Kleiber. 
so close to his second goal of the game. He did everything right, so he headed the ball down. Oh, the keeper is beaten. He just gets in here. There's a group of players around him. Look at that. Good, powerful header. Knocks it down, and it hits just wide of the post. The ball coming across to him. He gets there in front of everybody. Albert fell down. Clyburn was left alone. Should have been number two for Patrick. Yes, he was well picked out there by his former Ajax teammate, Ronald De Boer. There are some 7,000 supporters here that have made the trip from Belgium. At the moment they are doing everything to try and raise the spirits of their team. Here's Shifo. Looks hungry at the moment, wants to get involved. Ball play forward, Van der Elst. Here's Van der Elst again, just trying to play that one through. Late challenge there from Genoa, but the referee has played the advantage. Couldn't play it the second time. And now free kick then for the Dutch. Oh, you're going to see exactly what happens here. You can see the player coming across, you know. Just takes the ball out of it. That one point of Belgium could get it could turn out to be very, very important. Like it would still leave the Netherlands in the driver's seat, but it would certainly leave Belgium in a much better situation in their head-to-head -head with Turkey. It would also mean that the Netherlands would definitely have to go out and beat Turkey the next day, so nothing would be easy for Turkey. And Kleiber. Where can we cross there was uh, Philippe Albert. And now the Dutch are going to make a couple of changes. Winston Bogard, one of the players waiting to come on, wearing the number 14, and Aaron Winter. It's the other player that uh, is waiting to come on. Oh, Bogart also in a new home this year with AC Milan. And Schifo. Penza. Oh, it was a player just trying to thread that one through. And to Elst. Got the loose ball. Now as you know. Outswinger. You've got it clear. And the shot coming in. That was rather ambitious. Coming in from uh, Van So we're now going to get the change. And Ronald De Boer is one of the players who is going off. Aaron Vinter is the player that is coming on. And Winston Bogart also to come on. And he's going to replace... That's the Jeff Stam, is it? Now it's Newman. Arthur Newman. So a straight swap. Newman and Bogart are both uh, playing that sort of left wing back position. And Aaron Vinter. His sixth and sixth uh, appearance now for... Uh, the Dutch today, which moves him up into equal sixth spot in the all-time. Uh... He put him back off, Mike, to take off his jewellery. Fred, the jewellery, catching somebody here. There's much gold in him out there as there is in Fort Knox. We waved him back on. NFL, American football here on ESPN. The Dallas Cowboys up against Arizona. You'll be able to see that live on Sunday. Check your local listings. That's for our international audience. Oh, Bogart didn't get back on the field yet. Netherlands playing with a man down because of the jewellery situation. Aaron Winter, as I was saying, or Aaron Winter, as I was saying, this is 66 international appearance. He now ties with Ruud Hullick as the sixth most capped player in uh, Dutch football. One of those players, Mike, he actually plays better for his country than he does on the club level. He's had a problem keeping his place on the club team, but always seems to get a run at international level. Oh, the referee's really giving Bogart a hard time. He won't let him come back on again yet on the play stops. And Seedorf. And Seedorf there, pulled down from behind. And the pull down there was from uh, Van Meyer. Well, now he's taking his Bogart to come back on. So it's 
free kick then for Holland. You're watching the Road to World Cup 98 coming to you from the De Kuyp Stadium in Rotterdam. A look then at the Mastercard game summary. Stam and Kleiber scoring the goals for the Netherlands. And then from the penalty spot, Stalins bringing Belgium back into the game. For Belgium at the moment under pressure. Get the ball clear. Now Bogard. Stan was the player forward that time. Now Aaron Vinter. Seedorf. Going straight through looking for Vinter. Got a foot in and it didn't quite have the legs there to reach Dennis Bergkamp. Philip Albert got there first. Genot. Tommy, how long Belgium will wait before they bring on somebody like the builder who's a recognized goal scorer, always seems to score whenever he does come on. I'm surprised they haven't taken him on already, Mike. In fact, I was sure that they would give him a start. I mean, with the kind of football I've seen him play in Holland, he certainly looks like he's as good as anything to have out there. He's hitting. There's less than 15 minutes left to play, but they could be a very long. 15 minutes for him. Well, the Netherlands just seems to have gone a little bit flat, Mike. Clivert on that far side. Just caught there by the challenge of Vidovic. The builder still continues to warm up on that far side as we see this uh, challenge from Vidovic. Oh, Patrick Kleiber, a little bit of a problem controlling the ball and Vidovic made sure he wasn't going anywhere. Here's Genoa. And over the halfway line. Hogard comes out to meet him. It's Oliveira. Closely marked there by uh, Goku. On the far side, Vidovic. And Kirk Hoven. Turn of pace, needing a much better ball back into the penalty area. Now Vinter gets it clear. Seedorf now. It's uh, into Milan. Matt Bergkamp and uh, Vimeon. The easiest of clubs to play for. The expectations are always so high. That was a terrible ball from Bogart. Here he is again on the ball, Bogart. Better ball this time as he picks out Patrick Kleiber. The player that comes across there is uh, Van Meyer. Just joining us, let's check the game summary from MasterCard. Yep, Stan gave the Dutch the lead in the 32nd minute in the second half. Patrick Kleiberg made it 2-0. But then Belgium came back with a goal in the 67th minute from Stalins to give them the hope with some 13 minutes left to play. Enzo Schifo is the player that's going to go off. The Belgian captain to be replaced by the builder. The builder who's got this fabulous uh, strike rate now has less than 13 minutes to make his mark on this game. Well, the old replaced by the new, Mike. Maybe a sign of the times for Belgium. They're probably going to pull up Oliver out now. They'll use him in the midfield. Use the two youngsters up front as the strikers. Will that 13 international appearances, only one goal. Been able to reproduce his club form in the national shirt at this stage. Still only young though, 26 years old. Now Vinta. This is Vimyong. Trying to measure the cross. Bergkamp! 
and nearly catching out the goalkeeper at the near post. Very quick reactions there by the builder. Oh, one of the few opportunities that Bergkamp has had in the second half. Gets himself alone inside, just changes the direction of the ball. Almost caught the keeper out on the short side. Now Vim Yonk with the corner. Away that time by Albert. Koku. Now Bergkamp. Turning this towards the far post. Referee just a little nudge there from Patrick Cliver. Ah, oh, Patrick just gives him a little bit of a push. Patrick doesn't agree, but he feels he was the one. Bergkamp is the man who's going to square it across. Watching the middle ear picture, you can see Patrick just put his hands on the shoulder just a little bit. Well, the VIP box there and the Prime Ministers of both uh, Belgium and uh, the Netherlands. Well, they both seem to be enjoying the game, Tommy. They're certainly amusing themselves, that's for sure. Free kick then to Belgium. We come up towards the final ten minutes. Way there by Frank de Boer. Koku. And Bogart. Seedorf, who started his career at Ajax, had his debut there when he was just 16, then moved on to Sampdoria before really hitting the high spots at uh, Real Madrid. He went to a Spanish championship last season. Another player we'll see in the Champions League at some point with Real Madrid. Now Bergkamp, this is one he's played across again, nobody at the far post for uh, the Netherlands. Good cross though for Michael Reisinger. Oh, that has happened a lot of times here in the second half, Mike. Nobody has been filling that space at all on the left-hand side. The ball has drifted over there at least three, four times. Yonk. Stam, who's goal set to... Netherlands on their way to this 2-1 lead that they have with just nine minutes left to play. victory here the Dutch will take uh, a step closer to a spot in France oh well, that's huge goal differential Mike that could be the difference now Bergkamp rising up Bergkamp just rushed it a bit that time then it's Bergkamp oh he had the opportunity I mean nice one two Bergkamp gets it back again Cliver does the man coming in, he just squares it back to him. He just rushed his shot there and he came off the side of his boot as you can see in that replay. <laughs> Oliveira. It's Oliveira again, and that one through, but very red by Frank De Boer. Seedorf in quickly. And then trying to release Dennis Bergkamp. Great intercept that by uh, Philippe Albert and an important one at that. And Genot, the builder. Oh, they're just not getting the rub of the ball, the Belgians at the moment, Mike. A nice turn there by Patrick Clivert. He's tackled, it breaks for Bergkamp and how's that for a ball played immediately into the path of Aaron Vinter. Into there, unable to get past the first challenge of Van Meyer. Good challenge from Van Meyer. Good ball. This man has had some game. Yap Stam. Vinter just possessed on that far side. Now here come Belgium. coaches said before the game that a draw would not be the end of the world for either side both I'm sure went out to try to win it and it's the Dutch at the moment leading by two goals to one time very much on their side as the ball is played back here goes Bergkamp it's all over now surely ah 
Gerard Gorkamp has had a lot of opportunities here in the second half. He had failed to capitalize on a couple of occasions. This time it's not the hardest hit goal he's ever hit. But he just does enough to direct it around the player. Lukeman bid across into the box. He teams up well with Kleiber. Splits a couple of defenders. It comes back off the heel of Albert. And Bergkamp says, thank you very much. I'll put it away. Watch for Albert. He's a little bit unfortunate here. As Kleiber moves the ball back across him. Comes back off the heel. Falls just nicely to Bergkamp. Janot can't stop him from putting it in. Dennis Burkan gets his seventh goal in this World Cup qualifying campaign. His 33rd international goal in all. The Netherlands three, Belgium one. And then Dennis Burkamp now. Second equal touch uh, goal scorer in uh, history. As Wilkes is the only uh, now who has scored more goals for Holland. That's 35. Camp now on 33 alongside Johan Cruyff and Abe Lenstra. Albert plays it forward. And it's a sea of orange now around the De Kuyp Stadium. And the goal difference now for the uh, Dutch. It's now plus uh, 22 you can see before they've now scored 26 and that's plus 22 goal goals Tommy that's a, a tremendous goal difference and that really is like, worth a point isn't it well at this stage of qualifying it certainly must be but just one game left I mean uh, it would take an incredible game by Wales an incredibly bad game by Wales to make any difference now the goal differential when you, you look at what Belgium have to do Mike yes yeah, so and of course uh, there's always uh, perhaps uh, Turkey cause an upset and come to uh, Holland and uh, win 7 or 8 nil. that would be a real upset that would be a real shock yeah Aaron Vinter not sure I put too much money on that one now it's Vignon Epstein that one through. Kiver lifting it forward. Here's Seedorf. Clarence Seedorf. Burkamp. To Seedorf. Slow motion football at the moment from the Dutch. Burkamp. He lifts this one in and uh, well the idea was right but the execution certainly wasn't. Bim Jonkin made a great run from midfield and was completely unmarked at the far post. Ah, you can see the ball chipped inside. Patrick Kleiber is the man who puts it into Bergkamp. There it comes off Albert's heel and Bergkamp just tucks it away. Albert's a little bit unfortunate. Bergkamp's a little bit lucky. But that's what this game is all about, isn't it? You've got to have a little bit of luck. And he finished Bergkamp. Like a typical goal scorer, just seeming to be at the right place at the right time. And that really is so important. Clarence Seedorf is going off. And uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhurst is the player that comes on, the youngster from uh, Feyenoord. Only his sixth international appearance. So he comes on with just about three minutes left to play. Confirmation of that substitution. And Bronckhorst, who actually joined Feyenoord at the age of 10. And his debut against Brazil in a 2-2 draw. Quite an occasion to make your debut, isn't it? Swap this shirt with Giovanni. And Sheffens has also now come on for Belgium. We're at the number 17. And uh, the Pendra is the player that has gone off. So both sides have completed their use of substitutes. Both have used three. There's confirmation of the final substitution there for Belgium. Oh, Brankhorst. Van Bronckhorst will be happy to hear that his teammate Connolly scored a goal for the Republic of Ireland today. Another couple of players we'd see in the Champions League with Feyenoord, Mike. NFL action here on ESPN live on Monday for our international audience. The Kansas, the Kansas City Chiefs up against the Oakland Raiders. Check your local listings for times. That's live coverage of the brand new season of the NFL here on ESPN. Holland 3, Belgium 1, 
with just about 90 seconds plus any stoppage time the referee might add on left to play and no wonder they're singing at the decay it's a sea at the moment of orange stay with us at the end of the match we'll be back with our post-match wrap Belgium now with a corner Luis Oliveira trying to put uh, Van der Sar under pressure which he's done fisted away though by the goalkeeper well, I think that was the difference in today's game I mean Belgium had a lot of possession Mike but they didn't really put any pressure on the keeper and uh, Holland every time they got possession it looked like there was a problem for the keeper and they took care of the few opportunities that they had and that basically was the difference Builder who was introduced to the game in the 78th minute in hindsight should have perhaps been uh, brought in a little bit earlier we are the champions is the being sung at the moment by the crowd well, perhaps that's a bit premature you might as well be optimistic I guess Break the ball. In the last minute, not too much time. We had it on for stoppages. Bergkamp put under pressure, losing out that time. Here's uh, Stalins. Score from the penalty spot for Belgium. We're now playing stoppage time. Belgium will have to pick themselves up. We still have one more game to play. That against uh, Wales at home. Remember they beat Wales in Cardiff. Big old side now in the rebuilding stage as he looks towards the next the European Championship, which ironically will be jointly held and hosted by these two countries. Rise now on Kim Milton Nilsson, the referee from Copenhagen in Denmark. seconds or so of stoppage time has been uh, played surely there can't be too much more now but the builder there running into uh, Frank De Boer who helps him back to his feet we're going to get a free kick for Belgium this could be their final opportunity Tommy oh, the referee has already checked his watch Mike he's taking another look at it now Vidovic is one of the players over the ball. Ingersoll ensuring that he's got a good view. This free kick comes in and no worries there for Edwin van der Sar. There is the final whistle and it is a victory for the Netherlands. Greeted by a sea of orange for Belgium. Well, their hopes still live on. They have one more game to play. Yep, Stam put uh, Holland on their way to victory in the first half and then goals in the second half from Patrick Kluivert and then one that came six minutes from the end from Dennis Bergkamp in short of victory.